Any, I could eat one of those jumbo Franklin's. Mm, okay. And, and a bite of fresh pineapple drink with, with color added, huh? Mm, sure. Well, what's the matter? You look indignant. Indignant? You ever hear of a place called Staten's Island? Staten Island. That's what I said. You ever hear of the Staten's Island? Mm, sure. Down there in the ocean. There. Lots of extra lives. Ever been there? Large, please. No. But a friend of mine got picked up there once. Send the policy packet. Well, I've been there. Imagine they got woods. Woods with trees in them. Gee, mm, that sounds nice. Nice. One hour each way. Subway, ferry, bus. Then the same thing right back again. Bus, ferry, subway. Two hours for a lousy two-bit tip. You know, I'm going to quit this job. I can just save up a couple of bucks. Mm, what would you do if you could save a couple of bucks? Uh, I'd go into business myself. No more working for old man Cavanaugh at the Crazen Hotel. No, sir. I need no man. What would you do? Start your own messenger service? That's it. Tommy's rapid delivery. She had to have my own motorcycles and everything. Well, I guess I better get back to work. She's probably the way she to lug a steamer trunk out to the Bronx or someplace, you know. Hot, ain't it? Mmm, getting on towards summer now. Yeah. You know, a day like this, a guy wants to be out of the ball game. Not run errands for old man Cavanaugh. Well, I'll see. Sure, take it easy. Yeah? Yeah, Max. Yeah, they're here now. Oh. Okay. Max says the tip was right. He's at the Hotel Craven, room 403. Okay. <laughs> Extra large. Rhyme soda, yeah. What happened to that messenger I called down for about ten minutes ago? Coming right up, huh? you up here? Huh? You heard me. Who sent you up here? Oh, he sent me up here. You called for me. Don't tell me what I did. You don't know what I did. I'm asking you who sent you. Hey, what's the big idea, huh? Mr. I'm asking the question. You're 403, ain't you? That's what it says on the door. You wanted a messenger, didn't you? Down at the desk, they said you wanted a messenger. Okay, messenger. What took you so long? Oh, now, Look, mister, I just got the call. I've been in Staten's Island all day. Yeah, I've got troubles of my own. I want you to take this bundle to 135 East 68th Street at 5 o'clock this afternoon. 5 o'clock, no sooner. Got it? Yeah. 
Wait a minute. Wait. What are you doing? Write down the address. No, you don't. Can't you remember it? 135 East 68th Street. That's so tough to remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember it. Okay, then. If I want anything written down, there's a public stenographer on the mezzanine. I saw the sign. Look, mister, I'm supposed to make out a slip for the record. I don't care about the record. You look like a kid who could use ten bucks. Sure, I guess, I guess anybody could use ten bucks. Sure. All you gotta do is take a little bus ride with that bundle without making out any slips. Well... I was sure you'd see it my way. There you are. There'll be another ten dollars coming after you've made the delivery. How's that? Hey, you got me kind of interested now. What's in it? You're asking too many questions. I'm handing you 20 clams to take care of that bundle. And don't let it out of your sight until 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? What am I supposed to do until 5 o'clock? It's only one now. Do whatever you want. Only I don't want that bundle out of sight. Now get going. Who do I deliver it to at five o'clock? Me. You? That's right. I'll be at the 68th Street address when you get there. Well, it's not screwball, but okay. of a joint is this anyway? What happened to that drink I ordered ten minutes ago? You want a guy to die up here? Been looking all over for you, Gunner. Listen, boys. I'm listening. Only what I'm listening for, you ain't gonna hear. Park Avenue. <laughs> nice name, eh? Halloway C. Galloway. Ridmical, you know what I mean? Never mind the Ridmical. The money compartment. Look in the money compartment. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Don't rush me. I like to anticipate. Hey, sweetheart. How's for perhaps some more of them jumbo dumbo Frankfurters, eh? Listen. The boss said to me particular the other day, he said no more free jumbos to those two left-handed pickpockets, Herbert and Marvin. Let's hand it. It ain't our fault business is bad. Can we help it? People ain't got no money around carrying around with them. Sure, people ain't walking around heels these days. They're walking around. But they're leaving their door at home. You want to make a buck today, you got to knock over a payroll, like the Macintosh guy. <laughs> what do you two know about that hall? Only what we read in the papers. Twenty grand they lifted to make a payroll. <laughs> Boy, I sure like to get a hook into a corner of that 20 grand. Just a little corner, even. Yeah? Well, give a listen, you two guys. Save your hooks for old ladies' pocketbooks. Stay away from the big-time stuff. Save this. Large of extra large. Large. Getting awful touchy all of a sudden. The Wallace, the Wallace. Never mind the Macintosh. She's probably 500 miles away already. Don't get so noisy. <laughs> I don't know, Eagle. I can't find any place where he's hiding. There's got to be. You heard what Mac said. That double-crossing gunner stashed it somewhere, and we got to find it. Okay, okay. Who's there? Hey, take a look. <laughs> Dope. Three tickets to Ebbets Field. Box 64. Season tickets. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> then we go to ball game. The ball game. Ball game. Will you put the love of Pete get to the door? All right, don't get so nervous. Back again? But ain't Staten's Island for a quarter at 68th Street for a screwball. Huh? All afternoon, I gotta lug this bundle around. Then at 5 o'clock, I gotta take it back to him. Only he ain't gonna be there when I take it back. How can you take it back to him if he ain't gonna be there? I mean, he ain't gonna be where I took it from. He's gonna be where I'm gonna take it to. See, that's confusing, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Sally, why couldn't I leave it here and pick it up at 5? Behind the counter, maybe, huh? No, the boss don't like people leaving their stuff all over the place. <laughs> Wonder what's in it. I don't know. The way the guy acted, you think it's full of money. Huh? <laughs> Give me a frank fitter, will you, Sally? Sure, Sally. It's a lousy bellhop. Well, it ain't here. Yeah, what are we going to do now? We've got to tell Mac. Mac ain't going to like that. You ain't kidding. <laughs> Lousy double crosses. Not a lousy penny. Driver's license. University club. Baseball tickets. Not a lousy buck. Great work. Well, they look like they had dough. Sure, look. They probably had two of them. I know guys that carry two bucks, two wallets. They, they carry their dough in one and their cars in the other one. So why didn't you get the one that had the dough in? Well, how is that a no? Can you tell just by looking at the guy how many wallets he's got? We got baseball tickets anyway. Right, three. Sure, a couple of hundred bucks set me up just fine. Then I could knock off on an afternoon like this if I wanted to. Taking a ball game, you know? Shut up a minute, kid, will you? Well, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. Me and Farrell looked all over the joint. Mac phoned a few minutes ago. He ain't gonna like it. Yeah, that's what I said. What's more, maybe he won't even believe it. We wouldn't cross, Mac. Oh. Gunner did. Look, all I know is Max said get the dough back. And if you don't, well, you know Max. Sally, uh, I'd like to have a word with you. I'm to get rid of these two. I already told you, no dough, no donuts. We was not soliciting free food and drink. We happen to be gentlemen of the it was our intention of asking you to join us at a small baseball contest to be held between the Brooklyn's and the St. Louis. Are you kidding? Hey, you gonna watch the Dodgers? Who's this character? Oh, I didn't mean to butt in. It's just I'm a Dodger fan myself. You go with him, Tommy. I got a stick it for. Are you interested in watching a ball baseball game? Well, yeah. Well, why don't the three of you go? Why not? I don't know. I don't want to go lugging this bundle all the way out there in the field. Hey, Sally, why couldn't I leave it here for a while? Huh? Because I already told you no. All right, all right, all right. I ain't looking to be discommoded. Well, let's go. Oh, well, maybe we ought to introduce ourselves. My name's Tommy. Oh, uh, I'm, uh, Hoybie the Hook. Hi. And this is my partner, Marvin the Push. Oh, how do you do, Mr. the Push? Please, the noise. What's in the bundle? I don't know. Five o'clock, I've got to deliver it to some screwball up on four or three. It's crazy. Oh. So he wasn't expecting to get that 403 to Craven. Wait a minute, 403? Yeah, Gunner's room. He said to deliver it at 5 o'clock. For the love of Pete, Sally, he kept trying to give it to you. Call up Mac and tell him we're on the tail. Be careful. I get it. What three cops is it ever feel? The cops will think they were rooting for St. Louis. Well, I don't know. Mac don't want any slip-ups. There won't be. When we get through them, they'll look like three of your jumbo frankfurters. Come on. In just a moment, we'll see the second act of this evening's suspense story, The Parcel. But right now, friends, during this brief intermission, I have a special surprise for you. Listen. Yes, indeed, the circus is coming to town. And here comes the circus train, featuring that superstar, the greatest box office draw in Hippodrome history, Colossal Carl, the most grandiose gorilla in captivity. Say, hey, but what's that? Why, King Carl's cage is bucking like a bulky lion. And poor Colossal Carl, that mass of might and muscle, has been bounced around so much that he looks like a meek mongoose instead of an angry ape. Why, even Gerard the Giraffe has lost his poise, and, and as for Peppo, well, he wishes that someone would stop monkeying around. 
Yes, indeed. It's a mighty jumpy circus parade that's coming into town. Why, in fact, a situation like that would make any respectable circus uh, blow its top. <laughs> but anyway, friends, we found out what was the trouble with that circus caravan. It was simply a case of old, worn-out spark plugs. Yes, sir, all those circus cars needed was new Autolite spark plugs. So, we recommended a set of wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. You know, they're the newest addition to the complete line of resistor, transport, aviation, regular, marine, and model spark plugs, ignition engineered by Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Now, let me show you why they're so wonderful. You see, there's an exclusive 10,000 ohm Autolite resistor that's built right into every Autolite resistor spark plug. This makes practical a wider initial gap setting, the advantages of which have long been recognized by automotive engineers. Now, from the minute you install wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs in your car, you can count on quicker starting at low temperatures. In addition, the wide-gap will give you smoother engine performance with leaner gas mixtures at low speeds and when your car is idling. Naturally, because you can use a leaner gas mixture, you'll use less gas. Another thing, wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs actually check radio and television interference. And what's more, Autolite resistor spark plugs will give you double life that's right, friends, double life under equal conditions as compared to spark plugs without the exclusive built-in resistor. So why don't you take the advice of our engineers and visit your, your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer tomorrow. Ask him to replace worn-out spark plugs with a set of new Autolite ignition-engineered spark plugs. Well, in, in this case, we fixed up those circus cars with a set of new wide-gap Autolite resistor spark plugs, and then everything returned to normal under the big car. Yes, sir, our friend Colossal Carl is once more. And say, look at Gerard the giraffe. Well, he figures that things are looking, looking up again, too. And as for Peppo the monkey, well, he and some of his friends have added a new banner, which they're displaying now. In fact, it's the most outstanding sight in the circus parade. Yes, indeed. You're always right with Auto Light. And now, the second act of our suspense story, The Parcel. Somebody will try and swipe it. Oh, must have been a mistake. People don't go around swiping other people's property. Uh, my, you might be in danger carrying it around and uh, not knowing what was Well, I'm just supposed to deliver it. If the boss no went around looking at the deliveries, he wouldn't like it. Yeah, we ought to see. I don't think you ought to do that. It might be private. It's for your own protection, see? Uh, if these are cigar coupons, this guy, you ought to quit smoking. Money. Money, money. Money and more money. A corner of 20 grand you wanted, huh? Get out of here. Oh, I want to see the game. But, but, but you can't keep that bundle that way. It ain't legal. You could get in trouble that way. Sit down. You ain't going no place. You're going to sit here like a nice little boy and watch the ball game. Men will pick and pockets for us, right? From now on, it's the big time. Sit down. You want us to put your eyes out? Talk to Mac, and here's what he wants you to do. He wants you to get the dough back. 
Yeah, and he wants those three jokers taken care of. Yeah, and no slip-ups this time, or Max Lad will think of a way of taking care of you two. Yeah. And get going now. Wait a minute. What's the score? It is. Ah, oh, them bums. Listen, I'm just trying to save up enough money to start my own business. A thing like this it could ruin my reputation before I begin. No, we ain't being unreasonable. We'll open your three-way split. Sure. Where'd you hear to ever hear that kind of money before, Tommy? A thirty to twenty grand. That's uh, seven thousand bucks. Six thousand. How many times do I have to tell you? Six thousand. Six thousand, seven thousand. Look at this. With that kind of money, you can start any kind of business you want to, boy. But it's stolen money. Certainly it's stolen money. You think we'd give you a third of it if it was ours? You call it a strike, you bum. What's the matter? You're blind. Oh, hey, What's the matter? You don't like the game? Maybe you don't like the seat. Huh? No, no, no. They're very good, really. So stick around. Well, thanks very much, but I ought to go. You ain't going no place. It ain't you want to sneak out and tell the cops there's a couple of guys with 20 grand and buck 64. I wouldn't do that. You bet you wouldn't. Because you ain't going no place, not without us. Well, what are you going to do? I thought we might take a little trip after the game. But I can't go with you. Only part of the way. Then you can get out and walk home. And just to make sure you don't walk too fast, why, Herbie and me, we might break your leg. Huh? Just one. I don't know, Eagle. We can't make what's wrong now off the top of the night. You mean we can't make the snack on the way out? Yeah, we might miss it. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Well, what's your idea? Well, we'll wait until the game's over. Everybody be getting up, stretching, lots of confusion. Who knows anything in the crowd? Yeah, why not? Only remember, keep a cork in that rod of yours. We'll use a knife. Oh. <clears throat> Huh? Maybe, maybe we ought to pull out now, huh? Well, cool. Well, it's the top of the ninth, and if we wait till the crowd breaks, we might lose Tommy in the crowd, and we don't want to do that. No. Okay, kiddo, on your feet. Listen, not you heard me. Yeah, but... Let's go. Come on. And just don't make any phony moves, or you might fall down a flight of steps. Concrete steps. Forward, march. Sorry to bust in on your little party like this. But you've got something that belongs to Harry McIntosh. McIntosh? McIntosh? Take it. Everybody sit back down. Sit back down nice and quiet. That's the ticket. Right, three! Last of the night. Last of the night. Two outs to go. And then the kid strikes out. For keeps. Well, what do we do with these other two guys? Take care of them later. No. You were just right, Isaiah. You had to hook three tickets. Who wasn't enough? You and me. Do we have to drag bright eyes along? Shut up. Yes, sir. Right, please! Down there, where are you? Man, man up. Stop! Yeah. Right, up! Right, one, gentlemen. Maybe we could make some kind of a deal. I don't have to make any deals, friend. You won't get away with it. No. Too so late now, Buster. One man's dead already because of that 20 grand. Another one don't matter. I think I don't like baseball so much. I Shut up. Look. There's a pitch. Oh, that guy's got no control. He's winding up. Take it, you guys. Hey, Greg, 
Here, here's the money. Well, you're all under arrest, all of you. One of these men has my wallet. Galloway, see Galloway. Um, here's your lousy wallet. Officer, arrest these men. Oh, they've been arrested already. Come on, let's go. You see? We put the same racket for 10 years and we never get pinched. As soon as you change your racket, whammo. Oh, kid, there's probably a reward. Well, never thought of that. I can quit right now and open my messenger service. I intend to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law. You can prosecute all you want to, pal. See you now. Sorry, pal. Well, I told you had two wallets. Why, you lousy left-handed hook. You got the wrong one again. Sometimes it ain't even worth getting out of bed in the morning. Well, come on, let us hire ourselves down to the precinct and collect our reward. Yes. Yeah. Our reward. Certainly, three-way split. Oh, now look. Oh, one third of ten thousand dollars. That's uh, that's four thousand dollars. Three thousand. All right, all right. Three-way split. But when we collect the money, keep your hands out of my pocket. Come on, you guys. Come on. Let's go. Francis is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite, and in just a moment I'll tell you about next week's suspense story. But right now I have something very interesting to show you. Did you know that two types of seal beam headlights have been used in all cars made since 1940? Both are completely sealed so that it's impossible to get inside. Now, the question for you to decide is, which type of seal beam unit do you want for your car when replacements are needed? One that will burn out the minute the lens gets cracked or broken? Or the metal back Autolite bullseye seal beam with the extra safety protection because it continues to function even after the lens is cracked or broken? Yes, friends, the Autolite seal beam with the exclusive bullseye lens is the newest development in night driving. It's scientifically designed to put more light on the road by concentrating the stray reflected light and adding it to the main driving beam. Now, each Autolite bullseye seal beam unit is individually focused at the factory, and then it's sealed under pressure of 9,000 pounds per square inch so that dust or moisture cannot get in. Then, as an extra safety precaution, after they're sealed, these lamps are tested in hot water to prove that the seal is watertight. Only one of the many extra steps we take to make sure that Autolite seal beam units have no superior. So get the Autolite seal beam with the exclusive bullseye lens, the white, bright headlight that gives increased visibility at night and promotes greater safety on the highway. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Our suspense story next week will be My Old Man's Badge, starring Barry Nelson. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.